So you got your 3D printer all assembled. Now what do we do? We gotta level that damn bed. I can't stress that enough. If you've never used a 3D printer before, then leveling the bed might seem like the hardest part to get right. In the beginning, it is. Eventually, you'll get the feel for it. And you'll get fast at it too. I'm gonna to do my best to keep this video short the goal here is to get your machine up and running and pushing plastic. First things first, if you got yourself a bubble level to help level the bed, get rid of it. Don't tell anybody you were going to do it, just get rid of it. It doesn't work that way. Leveling the bed is making sure that the height between the nozzle and the bed plate is consistent throughout the entire print surface. You'll see some people on the internet group say things like tram the bed. Technically, it is the correct term. Nobody uses it in everyday conversation. Most people using the term tramming are to 3D printing what the grammar police are to Facebook. Just somebody trying real hard to sound real smart because they finally finished printing that articulating octopus after eight attempts. These are the same morons that'll tell you things like buy heavy duty yellow springs, <coughs> silicone leveling columns, <coughs> or a glass bed plate to level your bed. <coughs> they are nice upgrades but not needed to level the bed. Not everybody wants to pour more money into their printer right away. Some people want to run their machine stock for a while before making any changes. That's what I recommend. This Ender 3 is new, just out of the box. To level the bed, we'll need a piece of regular printing paper, not even the full sheet. Ignore the people that are telling you to use a feeler gauge. In theory, it's a good idea, but in the end, the process is still the same. You can try it if you want. It doesn't hurt, but it isn't any better. Just be sure to clean all that machine oil off first, or you'll have some serious bed adhesion problems. As far as I'm concerned, get rid of it. At least for now. A feeler gauge is made of machine steel with a smooth surface. You want to feel the paper scratching across the nozzle. Smooth steel isn't going to give you that feel. Ignore the armchair engineers. Form your own opinion. We don't want to use a business card or even cardstock. They are just way too thin. So, let's get started. All right, first we're going to power this uh, bad boy up. Now we're going to auto home, prepare. Now we will disable the steppers. This will allow us to move the print head. The important thing to remember is that a change on any one corner has an opposite and equal effect on the diagonal corner. Sure, the other two corners are affected, just not as dramatically. This is the view that a lot of other videos may show you. What you don't see is that when any one corner is changed, there is an opposite effect on the diagonal corner. When the left front is lowered, the right rear rises. When the right front corner of the bed is raised, the left rear corner will lower. A good example is to let the air out of your right front tire of your car. The left rear bumper will rise. As you put air back into the tire, you're going to notice the left rear bumper will lower. For this reason, if you find yourself cranking on a knob and aren't feeling like you're getting anywhere, 
Just move to the opposite diagonal corner and work that one. Then move back to the previous corner. I typically work in a counterclockwise direction, but I have no problem moving to another corner if I'm not making the progress I feel I should be. Nothing ticks me off more than cranking on that knob three ways to Sunday just to have it fall off in my hand. With our stepper motors disabled, we're going to pull the print bed forward. We're going to slide the nozzle over. I usually like to go right above the spring, right about there. And we'll start working our piece of paper in there. You just want to slide that right between the nozzle and the print bed. That ain't too bad actually right there. If you unscratch it, it's too tight, so I'm going to change that up. Loosen it a little bit. Right there. Maybe. I'm usually fussy with the first one when it's that close. There we go. What we don't want to see is when you put the paper under and you're tightening it so much that the paper doesn't move at all. Or, let's see, just a little bit more. That when you push the paper, it bunches up like that. That's too tight. You don't want to bunch it. So we're going to loosen that up, we're going to give it a little bit, it's still a little tight. I know this can be annoying, it's a lot less annoying than uh, coming back in about seven hours and finding your prints of nothing but a pile of spaghetti. So it's best to take 10-15 minutes. In the beginning it's only going to take that long as you get going. We'll do this in about two, three minutes. And there we go. And I'm not sure that you can see the tiny little gap between there. That gap we're gonna make a little bit bigger as we go on. Auto home, and this will re engage our steppers, and we'll get some filament loaded up and do a test print. All right, we're all leveled up, at least we think we are. See how we did. Let's get some filament on here and run a test print. I'm going to be using this GST 3D. Uh, I don't get a kickback. I'm not sponsored by them. It's just the filament I use probably 99.9% .9 of the time if I'm using PLA plus, this is what I'm using. Uh, they have some good deals, free shipping. Check them out.
it didn't look too bad. A little bit too close here. It could be a, looks like it might be a little bit of warp in the bed, but not too bad overall. If you found this information useful, click the like button, smash that bell, and let me know down below in the comments. Make your next print a good one, and please don't forget to subscribe.